Welcome to Korea. Today we continue our adventures in Seoul, South Korea. Seoul is a city that never sleeps, where you'll find soaring skyscrapers next to bustling markets, trendy cafes, shiny shopping malls, and stunning historic palaces. Seoul is a city of contrast, where modern meets traditional, with a little bit of something for everyone. As a couple who has spent years living, working, and exploring this city, today we're happy to share our recommendations for must-do things in and around the capital city. And this is by no means an exhaustive list, so if you know any other great recommendations for visitors to Seoul, please add them in the comments below. Here's our list of awesome things you should check out the next time you're in Seoul. And we have special guests today! My family came to visit. It's their first time in South Korea. My brother knows one Korean word. Pigeon. Bidugidu. Kosna. <laughs> so let's get started. Number one on our list is to start off your time in Seoul by joining the Hop On Hop Off Seoul City Bus Tour. With prices at about 15 USD per person, this tour is a serious deal. It includes an audio guide that introduces you to some history and culture during your ride. And you also get taken directly to most of the major tourist highlights in the city. Namsan Tower, Gyeongbokgung, Insadong, Dongdaemun Design Plaza, and so much more. The way it works is really simple. Anytime you want to jump off, you exit the bus, explore, and then reboard one of the next buses that comes by the stop. Buses make stops at each point of interest about once every 30 minutes or so. There are a few different routes to choose from and tickets can be purchased online. They include earbuds for the audio guide, which is available in 12 different languages. If you're new to Seoul, this gives you so much great information to start off your time in Korea. And if you've already lived here for a long time, this tour can introduce you to some history that you've probably never heard before. So we just got off the double decker bus. This is what it looked like. So you see it's open top to the second floor. The first floor has a little bit of less sitting. We sat on the top and it was great. The second thing we recommend in Seoul is to learn a bit of history and culture at Gyeongbokgung, the most famous and significant palace in Seoul. Gyeongbokgung was built in 1395 and was home to the kings and government of Joseon dynasty. Before entering the palace itself, be sure to stop by Gwanghwamun Square in front of Gyeongbokgung to see statues of famous General Lee Sun-shin and King Sejong the Great. At the main gate of Gyeongbokgung, watch the changing of the guards and snap a few pictures. After entering the main gate, head to the right to purchase tickets at about $2 per person to enter the palace. Just FYI, the palace is closed every Tuesday. Entry is free if you wear a hanbok or traditional Korean clothing, which can be rented in shops right outside the palace gates or in nearby Insadong. We recommend the free guided tours which are available in 6 languages throughout the week. Check online for dates and times of the free tours. Even if you don't join a tour though, Gyeongbokgung has plenty of gorgeous buildings and areas to explore. Honestly, this palace tour is really cool. So we started out with a tour group and now the tour has ended, but there's just so many buildings and spaces to see, a lot of nice benches and places to sit and rest for a bit. Parents are really impressed with the architecture. I forgot how big this place was and I'm starting to realize that after walking for an hour and a half. I think they're done. Yeah. Let's see. I think they're done. <laughs> Near Gyeongbokgung is our third recommendation, Insadong, an area packed full of traditional tea houses and restaurants, shops, cafes, and galleries. This is a great place to try fun snacks. They have everything from delicacies like dragon beard candy, even novelty treats like poop-shaped bread. Make sure to walk up all the flights of the Samjigil complex to see all kinds of trendy shops and specialty stores. If you're trying to buy someone a gift or souvenir while you're in Korea, Insadong is one of the best places to do so. This area also has other fun highlights like museums and lots of art galleries. While in Insadong, we suggest enjoying our fourth recommendation, eating hanjongsik, or a full course Korean set meal. Each guest is given a bowl of rice and soup while the rest of the table is filled with a huge variety of different dishes. And then you feast. Hanjongsik is a way to taste a wide range of different Korean banchan or side dishes at one time. 
And the best part is that if you like a particular side dish, you can typically ask for more at no additional charge. Just make sure you're hungry before you go so you have enough room to taste a bit of everything. Number five on our list is to visit En Seoul Tower, formerly known as Namsan Tower in central Seoul. At 235 meters tall, this tower marks the second highest point in Seoul and offers 360 degree views of the surrounding city. Once you're at the top, you can enjoy a few different highlights. There's a viewing platform you can enjoy for free. Here you can purchase a love lock, but just FYI, they do eventually cut off the locks. Sing Hyun's friend used to work here. Inside the tower, there's a fifth floor observatory with tickets are $12.50 per adult. There are also a few restaurants, but we haven't tried any, so we can't vouch for how good they are. Honestly though, the views at the top, even the free views, are good enough for the visit. I thought that that North Seoul Tower was just fantastic. The view of the city, 360 degrees, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Number six on our list is to indulge in some delicious traditional street food at Gwangjiang Shijang. This is the oldest and largest continually operating traditional market in the city. Our top list of foods to try here are tteokbokki, spicy rice cakes, tigim, fried snacks, sundae, blood sausage, bindetok, mung bean pancake, and shikhe, a sweet rice drink. For the more adventurous, you can find more unique treats like bandegi, silkworm pupa, yukwe, raw beef, and sanakji, raw octopus. There are many other snacks and foods you can try in this market, and there are a lot of other sections like clothing, fabric. We recommend just having a wander and taking time to observe since this is a market frequented by locals and tourists alike. Our last recommendation, number seven, is to enjoy a night of rounds. Rounds refers to going to multiple places to eat and have fun in one night. We recommend starting in the afternoon with a cafe. According to one website we found, there are over 16,000 cafes in Seoul alone. And there are some pretty crazy themed cafes too. Since my mom rescued and raised two raccoons when she was a little girl, we took her to visit a raccoon cafe. Like a dog. Like a dog. As a side note, I recommend researching animal cafes before visiting since some don't have the most ethical practices. After the cafe, be sure to try to Korean barbecue at least once. For those who have never had it before, Korean barbecue is a method of grilling meat on charcoal or gas stoves often built into the dining table. You cook and eat the meat directly from the grill, and every time we've hosted in Korea, barbecue is hands down one of our guests' favorite meals in the city. Finally, enjoy a round of drinks at one of many of the popular bars around the city. We took my family to Yeolnamdong to enjoy a wine bar, but each neighborhood around Seoul has its own special flavor and vibe. For those of you that don't drink, there are also plenty of late night restaurants, street food, and of course, noreban. And so that wraps up our top recommendations for those visiting Seoul. We also recommend a day trip to the DMZ, the border between North and South Korea, but our visit with my family didn't go exactly as planned. Today is another special day. Um, we just woke up real early to go on a special tour. So today we're going on to see the DMZ. And as a Korean male, I was in the military and I've worked closer to the North Korean border. This will be my second time. There's a few options when you go on a DMZ tour. You can jump on a private van. There's even a train that goes into the DMZ. We booked a bus tour for the day. It's one of the cheaper options. Our hotel is right next to Hongdae Station. We're right outside of exit 2. We just wait here for the bus to come pick us up. When it gets here, we'll get on and it'll drive us up towards North Korea. So we're at Imjingak right now, which is this town that's as close as you can get to the civilian control area. So from this point, you can't go across unless you actually go through a military checkpoint. But here, they have so much stuff going on. They have restaurants, cafes, a 
gondola. There's a museum park here too. Even a park. Yeah, I think it's a place you could visit even if you don't keep going into the DMZ. Gaesong city is third largest city in North Korea and then 22 kilometers away from here. We are closer to North Korea than Seoul now. It's illegal for South Korean people to go to North Korea from this side. Take photos as many as you want and then please come down on the first floor. We saw a video clip of one of the last um, engine men who can ride this themed um, train going towards North Korea and South Korea. Oh. Uh, uh, we just got word that our tour to the DMZ was canceled. Very disappointed, but it's what it is. Gotta go. be safe. We just got word that Kim Jong Un uh, fired several missiles from North Korea, so they actually canceled our tour for the day. Found out from our tour guide that not just the DMZ tour is canceled, everything in the area, even here, is closed. So the military is taking today more seriously, and even our guide was really surprised. So they offered us a refund. We still recommend the tour for those of you visiting Seoul because it really is a fascinating experience. And other than that and our list today, there are so many other places to see and enjoy in Seoul. Thank you so much for watching our video today. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to continue traveling with us. See you in the next one.